Kind of control the line the way it did. No, honestly, I did, did not expect, you know, think that that would be the case. I felt like, you know, we could come out and, and uh, try to establish our run game, and we knew we had some some shots in the game plan we felt like we could take advantage of, you know, and um, unfortunately, their particular first play of the game, you know, we just didn't connect on that, right? And we're behind the change, which is not favorable for any offense, particularly us. You know, all, all of our success this year has been when we were able to stay ahead of things. Right, and then you know, ran it the next play. It got a TFL, so it's third down along, three and out. Right, come back next drive again, aggress trying to you know get a shot going. We don't connect on it. So early in the game, we just did not connect on our shots, and then second down, we weren't able to get us it back into a third and manageable, and it kind of snowballed um, collectively as a team. Uh, and you know, we just try to keep our guys encouraged, and just as the game kept going, right, we still feel like there was enough possessions out there. We just get get going, you know, with it, and still trying to take some shots. We just, unfortunately, you know, we didn't connect on some of our, our shot plays. Kind of feeding off that, but obviously they got a lot of pressure on, on mm -hmm. Anthony. How do you think he handled things? Yeah. Did it feel like, especially early, that maybe he got a little rattled out? Of it? You know, he, he did. He came on sideline. Was just checking on him, you know, because uh, it did become an obvious passing type situation, right? Which is obviously in favor uh, for the defense, but. You know, he was he stood strong in there, tried to escape a little bit, and, you know, it's just uh, we just didn't execute, you know. We didn't. And it got behind it uh, in the third and longs. And then our success when we drove the ball, right, we got a couple explosive plays, we convert some third and mediums. I mean, that's the, you know, the formula for any offense, right? And it just didn't start off that way tonight. Was Mike banged up early in the game? Is that, is that yeah, what? you know, so, again, hey, next man's up, but, you know, Mike – Mike got banged up. Um, he had been dealing with uh, with his neck. I think he kind of aggravated that, you know, early in the game. So coming in, you know, he's our primary, our third down back in protection stuff. So, you know, him and PJ have been that all year. Um, and then so Kobe, you know, had to play in that role, you know. Uh, and then Greasy came in. I thought Jack did a good job when he came in for us, right, to run it and, and do some things with that nature. But, hey, it's – there's no excuses, right? We didn't play well enough early in the game um, to give ourselves a chance to be competitive and win, regardless of who's playing. You know, because it's next man up. You know, no matter what position you are, and uh, so we just, you know, the first half just didn't have a good first half. It was an ankle sprain that forced him out today. Okay. You're new to this rivalry, but seeing it for the first time, tonight, yeah. do you think some of this is is a mental block for, yeah. for the guys? And, and if so, how do you overcome that? Well, you know, we're, we're a new staff, right? And, and, and a bunch of us have been a part of some different rivalries. And, you know, it's all about what we talk about. It's really about UVA, right? And let's, you know, new staff want to change this outlook. I know this a history of, you know, not going in favor of UVA. But, like, it's really just try, trying to change our mindset internally, right? We had opportunity here at home. You know, we, did, we didn't capitalize on that, on that opportunity. Yeah. Saw Jerry Raymond come off the field, yeah. just falling yeah. with him. Mike Hans, I mean, yeah. talk a little bit about yeah. what you've seen in your class Well, you know, they've, they've endured a lot. You know, you, if you go back and just think, right, this group dealt with COVID, right, and, and didn't get a chance to go to a bowl game, right, after, you know, they were 6-6 six and six or 5-5 five and five in that year. The next year, um, you know, obviously the coaching change that took place and they were, you know, bowl eligible and didn't get to participate in a bowl game. And then last year, unfortunately, the tragedy that, that shortened the season. And then you come back this year, and, and you know, we had some, some highs, we had some lows, but we were fighting tooth and nail, had a couple of games we didn't capitalize on, and you get the chance here to finish your career at home, you know, against, against the rivalry, and we came up short. So I, 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 hurt, I hurt for those guys because they invested so much into this program, right, over their time here. And, you know, particularly – over these last, you know, as sound, you know, these 12 months has been, you know, a total, total, total investment, not just physically and mentally, but emotionally and psychologically. And, you know, all we wanted for these guys is to have an opportunity to win tonight, you know, and that was, you know, like any other game, we want to win, and particularly, you know, this one. So it really, it really sucks. It hurts that, that we didn't, we came up short. Jack. Um, moving forward now, next week's kind of focus on the offseason, yep. focus on what you guys need in the, in the portal. Yeah. Well, obviously, we have a, a big loss, you know, with Malik Washington, right? That'll be departing, right? And, you know, we're, we got a staff meeting Monday morning. 
to assess even more detail kind of what those needs are on both sides of the ball. And, you know, we're going to have an open mind to how can we help this program and this roster, right? And there's not a position, probably with the exceptional quarterback, because we like, obviously we feel really good about those two, two kids. Uh, but all the other positions, if we can help our team, right, then we're going to fully invest in research, be able to help this team, you know, not just with, with some playmakers and some leaders and some quality guys, but even establishing our depth, right? This is a physical game. You know, we got to continue to build this roster. Um, and so we're going to take advantage of these opportunities, you know, over the next week. Malachi, you've made some plays this year. Yep. You've been overshadowed a little bit by Malik. Do you yep. think kind of his performance today could be a – yeah. Yeah. You know, like you said, it's been it's been overshadowed. You know, how many catches he had today? He had six, so he might have finished right around um, sixty catches, I believe, and over eight hundred yards, which is not a bad year for anybody, right? And obviously, yes, he got overshadowed by by Malik, and you know, you start to see Mal play with more confidence. And I have to remind myself, you know, that he hadn't played a lot of ball until this year. You know, he was a, a in 21, right, he was a, a freshman that played barely, right? In 22, he missed nine games, played in the last game, right? And we see this tall specimen of a human being, and he's a worker. He's talented. And, you know, we had high expectations for him. You know what? He didn't disappoint us this year. Uh, but what he was able to do, I believe he learned – from Malik, because Malik is an older, mature guy, how to go about the day-to-day -day processes of not only studying ball, taking care of my body, recovering week to week so that I can be out there and be fully efficient as a player. And now the transition, now Mal can step up and really be that leader in that group, you know, across the board. You know, you got Calandra and Musket, you know. Now, you know, being able to chance to take go in this offseason and being leaders, Brian Stevens, these guys that wasn't in the program last year, they didn't really know. They had to find their way a little bit that are all coming back. Noah Josie, Mikael Boley, right? Blake Steen, you know, at the midway point, became the starter, and he's evolved, right? All this gained experience for us going into this offseason so that we can continue to grow, not just as an offense, but, but as a team, so that when 24 season come around, Right, we're on the other side of these three-point losses that we've encountered this year, right? These four-quarter games, right? With that, and that's that obviously be you know, as we're ending this thing tonight, unfortunately the way that it happened, but there's a lot to be encouraged about that's in that locker room and proud of of their fight and their determination throughout this year to to springboard us and carry us into this offseason. Last two from Mike and Jackie. Along those lines, this game can be a, a springboard if you, if you play well, mm -hmm. certainly if you win. Yep. Uh, what is your message when it gets lopsided and it gets ugly? Is this a game you bury? Is this a game you use for motivation? No, I mean, it's kind of both, right? You can't bury it, right? It's there. And we got to live with it for another 364 days, right? But at the same time, we can learn from it, right? We can learn from it and just continue to close the gap as a, as a team, as an offense, and, you know, at, at, executing better, right, controlling the emotions of the game, right. You know, we had a couple person, personal fouls offensively that was unchar uncharacteristic that kind of maybe stalled a drive out. And, we, you know, it's a rivalry, right, we got, but we got to control and play in between the whistles and not extend it, um, you know, past the whistle because those things impacted a couple drives earlier in the game and it was just hard to overcome. But, you know, it's just about UVA and our coaching staff, our players, and all the support staff continue to progress from where we are, all right? The wins don't – I know it, for everybody, the wins don't necessarily show up, but there's a lot of progress progress that's been made internally, right? And we're all looking forward to moving forward into 2024. You touched a little bit on what Malik has contributed to the program. Yep. Ten games, 100 yep. yards received, almost 11, three yards short against Boston yep. College. What has he meant to the program? You know, just uh, – he was a fit from the day he stepped in the, in the building, you know, from – the type of young men that we want to attract into this program, you know, guys that, that love football and value their education, and they love football where they put in the extra because that's the separator. It's your preparation, right? You can have the skill called this, but learning how to prepare mentally and physically, you know, to put yourself in a position so when opportunity knocks, you're able to answer. And he's a guy that showed that to these, particularly in that wide receiver room and, you know, offensively. And, you know, I think um, – not just him, 
but some of the guys we added in the transfer portal, like a Brian Stevens, like, you know, even a Ugana, right? Even, you know, a Tony Musket, like those guys come from different experiences. And they, they have the same core values that we have and what we want to instill in this program. And then just reinforcement with the guys that was learning how we want to do things. And it's, it's starting to catch. It's starting to take. And, you know, again, tonight, right, not the outcome any of us envision or even wanted, right, but there's, there's some positive to take from this season, you know, moving forward.